Thank you for your interest in Kapow software. In this video, I'll be demonstrating document migration into SharePoint. The Kapow Catalyst Extraction Browser can extract documents and content, including metadata, from files, database systems, websites, digital asset management systems, and CMS servers. The documents and metadata are organized into an intermediate database. Using the Extraction Browser, documents and folders, including the metadata, can be directly uploaded into SharePoint using the website user interface. Central to the Kapow Catalyst design environment is the Extraction Browser. I currently have Oracle Content Database loaded in the Extraction Browser. As I interact with the page and click on links, steps are generated in the robot up above. The purpose of this robot is to collect all of the folders, including the attributes, from Content Database, store it into a database so that we can then restore the folders in the exact same structure into SharePoint. The For Each Folder step is a loop step that allows us to repeat each of the steps that follow for each folder that's on the page. I can actually click the iterator button and we can see in the visual design environment what will happen at runtime. For each folder, we'll be extracting the attributes from the page. The first value we're going to extract is the name of the folder. When I pass by this step, you'll see the folder name become populated in the data object. So now we have the folder name, we'll extract the folder size, the last modified date, the last modified by, the description, and now we're going to set the parent folder into our data object. This is the only attribute that doesn't exist in the website. This is an attribute that we've created here before we started into the loop. We need to keep track of the parent folder so that we can rebuild the folder structure. Now that we've got all of the information that we need about that folder, we're going to store it into the database, and then the loop is going to bring us to the next folder, and we'll collect all of the information about that folder. In addition, any one of these that's a folder and not a file will be opened and processed in the same way. We'll extract all the attributes of the folders that are within that folder, and then we'll be extracting all of the attributes of the folders that are child folders to those folders. After the robot's completed running, we'll have a database of all the folders that were in CDB, including all of their attributes and all of their parent folders. We can switch to debug mode now and run the robot and watch as all the attributes are extracted from the website. Each of the folder's names, the modified by, the modified date, the description, and the parent folder, which is a value that we're creating so that we can reconstruct the folder structure. This next robot recreates the folder structure in SharePoint. We've created the root folder substage, and then we've set it as our parent folder. Now we query the database for all the child folders of the parent folder substage. The first child folder of the parent folder substage is loaded into our folder data object. We then click New Folder in the browser. The next step enters the folder name attribute in the new folder form, and then the next step clicks the Save button. We can see below the folder 2 has been created. The query database loop step then populates the folder data object with the second subfolder of the substage folder. We can see that the first one has been created here, and now the second one, folder 3, will be created. And now the third and final subfolder of substage will be created. From the design studio, we can check if there's another iteration available. When I click the next iteration button, we see that there is no fourth subfolder for substage. So what happens at runtime is the next branch is taken. All child folders created equals true for folder substage, and then the new parent folder set to one of the child folders of substage. The process is then repeated for that folder and all of the subfolders of that folder are created, and so on until all folders are created in the folder structure. Now that the folder structure has been recreated into SharePoint, we're ready to go back to our source, Oracle Content Database, and copy the files. This robot first logs into Content Database, and then it goes to the root folder that we want to migrate, and then it begins to loop through all of the elements within the root folder. It's going to then extract all of the attributes for each file. The first extraction step is going to verify whether or not the element is a folder or a file. This is done with the Tag Finder setting. The Tag Finder settings look for an attribute named ID in the HTML that ends with the text DOC. By inspecting the HTML down below, we can see that the ID in this HTML does not end with DOC because it's a folder. So when we try to pass this step and extract the file name, Kapow tells us that this step cannot be reached. We'll move to the second element, also a folder, doesn't find the tag. The third element, also a folder, no tag found. 
the fourth element, it is a file, and here you can see the red box lets us know that the tag finder has found a file based on the configuration here in tag finder. So when I pass this step, we extract the file name. That gets set as an attribute here. Here's our name. We're going to extract the file itself. Now, you can either extract the file directly into the database, as I'm doing here, or you can simply extract the URL for the file and then in a later robot go through the URLs and download the files to the hard drive. So it can be done either way. In the demonstration I'm doing both. I'm actually downloading the file into the database here. You can see the image and I'm getting the URL also. The next attribute to extract is the size. As I click past that step that's populated into our data object and then the last modified, the last modified by, the description, and the status. So now we can see our data object is fully populated with all the attributes from the website and now we're ready to store that into the database. And then we'll go back through the loop for any additional files that exist under this folder. Any folders that exist within this folder will be opened up here. This path will be taken if it's not a file. The folder's opened and each of those folders are looked through for files. Those files are extracted, all of the attributes, and if any folders exist within that folder, those folders are then opened and files are extracted from those folders, and so on until all the files are extracted from the entire folder structure. Let's go to debug mode now. We can see each of the files name, last modified, last modified by, mime type, the binary for the actual file, the file size, and the URL of the file, all are being extracted to the intermediate database. The robot's done running, we can click on any one of the files and see the attributes here down below. The final robot loads SharePoint, queries our database of files, clicks the substage folder, and then we click the add document. We populate the add document form with the file name from our file object here and the folder value from the folder location. We pass the step that populates the folder location and then we click the OK button and that file is added. We go back to our query database step and get the next file and continue through adding each document to each folder location into SharePoint. We'll switch to debug mode now and watch as the files are uploaded to SharePoint. This demonstration has shown how Kapow can interact with SharePoint through the UI just as a human would utilizing all the features that are available through the UI. Kapow can also interact with SharePoint through the PowerShell utilizing the API that's available through the commands there. If you have any questions or you would like to see a more in-depth content migration demonstration, please use the information below to contact Content Migration Sales at Kapow Software.